holidays don't just spring up sporadically just because somebody feels like celebrating something. Our traditional holidays that we celebrate in our modern times most of the time have roots in our ancient past, specifically pagan roots. And even though there are so many stories around this holiday of Valentine's Day, there's one origin story in particular that we're going to talk about today. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. Also, again, a very, very, very special thank you to all of our patrons who help make this channel possible. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta, and on this very special Valentine's Day edition, we are going to talk about Lupercalia. Personally, I had never heard of Lupercalia, and in my digging, I found a very interesting quote given to us by the History Channel. Now, I know the History Channel is kind of suspect with this information, but nonetheless, this is what the History Channel had to say about Lupercalia. Lupercalia was a bloody, violent, and sexually charged celebration awash with animal sacrifice, random matchmaking, and coupling in the hopes of warding off evil spirits and infertility. Lupercalia was a Roman holiday, a Roman celebration that took place on February the 15th. It traces as far back as the 6th century BC and ended in the 5th century AD, which we'll get to later on in this story. But to start with, what was Lupercalia? Now, the origins of Lupercalia go all the way back to the story of Romulus and Remus. Most people are familiar with the story of Romulus and Remus, but just a Cliff Notes version in case you are not. Romulus and Remus were the nephews of King Amulius. Now, Romulus and Remus's mother was the king's sister, and she had taken vows of celibacy. However, obviously those vows were broken when she gave birth to twin boys. And so the king ordered that the twin boys be drowned in the Tiber River. But kind of like with the story of Moses, somebody made baskets for the little boys and put them in the basket and sent them down the river. The basket got stuck in some weeds where they were found and they were found by a she-wolf who took them into a cave and raised them as her own. There's a very famous statue of Romulus and Remus with the she-wolf. I grew up in a city called Rome as well, Rome, Georgia, considered a sister city to Rome, Italy, and we do have our own statue of Romulus and Remus downtown in Rome, Georgia. Now, funny story, last time I was in Rome, Italy, they didn't seem too impressed about the fact that there was a small town in Georgia that was considered to be Rome's sister city. But nonetheless, I too grew up with the statue of Romulus and Remus. Now, eventually the boys were found by a shepherd and his wife, and they took the boys in and then raised them as their own. The boys later went back to the cave where they found the she-wolf who had raised them, and there they named her Lupercal. The boys then went back and killed their uncle who tried to have them killed as babies. Romulus ended up becoming like the king of the area, and that's where we get the name Rome from. And this is not only the origin story for the Lupercalian holiday, but also for Rome itself. Now, Lupercalia, the festival that happened on February 15th, started on Palatine Hill in the actual cave where Romulus and Remus were said to be protected by the she-wolf. This was a Lupercal cave, again, because they named the wolf Lupercal. Now, the festivities would start with the priestly caste, and there were two priestly castes. These were 
you guessed it, bloodline families. Both of these priestly castes were said to descend from both Romulus and Remus. The Quintilii priests were the descendants of Romulus and the Fabii priests were the descendants of Remus. So they were like celebrity big deals in the city of Rome, especially since we know apparently bloodlines have been super important since the beginning of time, especially to our elite. So these priests would meet in this cave together, this dark, dingy cave, and they would have a feast where they would also get pretty drunk. Then here comes the really sad part to me and probably to a lot of people watching that they would then sacrifice goats and one dog. Yes, you heard me right dog to their gods. People believe that they sacrificed a dog because the dog was the closest thing to the she wolf and they wanted to pay homage to the wolf who rescued Romulus and Remus from whence they descended from. At this point, they would have two young boys step forward from each clan to represent Romulus and Remus. At that point, the priest would take the bloody knife from the sacrifice and rub the blood on their forehead. At that point, they would take a cloth and goat's milk and also rub the goat's milk on the forehead. Probably didn't smell too, too good. And after that was over, they would take the hide of the goats and they would make whips with these goat hides. Now these whips were called February or February, hence where we get the month's name from the Lupercalian holiday and from these whips made of goat hide. Once they had the whips, they would then strip down naked and being drunk and having these boys covered in blood and goat's milk, they would run all over the streets whipping people with these um, goats hide. Very interesting mating call, if you ask me. I feel like we're a little bit more civilized nowadays when we try to mate with people. And the reason why I say mate with people is because it was mostly women that they would try to whip. And women would willingly put themselves out there to be whipped because this whipping was a sign of fertility and it also was supposed to take away the pain of childbearing. Now, once the whipping and the shenanigans on the street were done, the priest would then cook, cook up the rest of the goat to serve to everybody else, of course, with loads and loads of alcohol. People in the town would also sing songs about their neighbors and their friends' sex life. Yes, you heard me correct. They would go out in this town and sing about their neighbor who had a propensity of showing up at brothels. Then to make it even more weird and possibly a little bit like a swingers club, the women would write their name on these tablets and place them into these jars where the men would come and draw out a woman's name. Now these women apparently, allegedly, were the women that they were supposed to spend the next year with. It was the hopes of these women that they would get pregnant during this time and have children. In my humble opinion, eHarmony is a way better way to find a match than being whipped and putting your name in a jar, having no clue who you're going to actually end up with for the next year. Now, again, as I stated, this festival happened from basically the 6th century BC all the way up to the 5th century AD. And it wasn't until 496 that they actually got rid of this pagan holiday. And the Pope at the time replaced it as the feast day for a man named Saint Valentine. Now, Saint Valentine had been executed on February 14th, hence why the date of the festival got changed and hence why it is now called Valentine's Day. Yes, the origins of Lupercalia were set in love and rope not I don't know if it's romance because maybe romance I guess it depends on who you're matched with but definitely fertility and sex but as we see it today was definitely changed in 496 AD so who was Saint Valentine well Valentine was a priest who lived in the Roman Empire in 
the 200s, so the third century. This was long before Christianity became a, an official religion of the Roman Empire. This was long before Constantine the Great was around. In fact, it is believed that Valentine was born in 226 AD. So yeah, like a hundred years before the Council of Nicaea. But with that being said, the Christian faith had spread throughout the Roman Empire, especially to the lower class of the Roman Empire. They were starting to turn away from the pagan ideology of the Roman Empire and embracing more of this Jewish or Abrahamic faith coming out of Israel called Christianity. Now around this time, the time of Valentine, or closer to to his execution, we had an emperor in Rome called Claudius II, or known as Claudius the Cruel. And Claudius really loved war. Unfortunately, a lot of, for Claudius at least, a lot of his men were not longing or wanting to sign up to be a part of the military. For the young men of the Roman Empire, it appeared that they instead of signing up to go to war and possibly die in a horrible, terrible way, they wanted to get married and have a family and live relatively peaceful lives. Don't really blame them, do you? Well, this was not good for Claudius II or Claudius the Cruel because he needed men. He needed men to fight for the Roman Empire. And so he banned marriages. And he started going around and arresting grooms, men who were supposed to go get married. He would arrest them. They could not get married. They had to go fight these wars for Claudius. Not for them, but for Claudius. Well, Valentine, being a priest in Rome, decided that God's love and God's hope for mankind to be married was a greater commandment than that of Claudius. And so Valentine started marrying people in secret. And you do not go against the emperor's wishes. As soon as Valentine was found to be conducting these marriages, he himself was arrested and executed. He was first beaten in public to death, then followed by a stoning, then followed by a beheading. His execution was approximately done in 278 AD. So it wasn't for over another 200 years before St. Valentine's Day feast was held on February 14th. And again, it was acknowledged and it was held just so they could stop practicing lubricalia. I mean, we got to find some way to stop these men from running around drunk naked in the town. And you know, it was just so handy that here this guy was, this priest named Valentine, who was marrying people in, in secret. That's, that's love, right? So let's just shift it. And let's shift the date to February 14th, the day he was executed. And let's just get rid of lupercalia altogether. But I'm sure somewhere in our world, there are still people who practice lupercalia. I'm sure they do it in secret. We know the elite do these things in secret all the time. Now reading about lupercalia kind of cracked me up with the running around naked and you know, whipping people although I'm not a fan of any type of sacrifice whatsoever. And I will continue to celebrate Valentine's Day with my boyfriend by exchanging a card and maybe eating some chocolate and getting some roses. So what are your thoughts? Have you ever heard of Lupercalia? Was this new to you? It was totally new to me, but not surprising because almost every holiday we have is found its origins in pagan beliefs. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. Again, I'm so happy you joined me today. Have a wonderful and happy Valentine's Day. I love each of you very, very much, and I hope your day is filled with goodness and fun. Once again, thank you to Josh McKay for doing our music, and thank you to Todd Roderick for helping me get this video out to you guys. Again, happy Valentine's Day, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.